They're gonna make me do it again, aren't they? They're gonna make me be political. I don't wanna be. I try not to be, but yeah. The amount of stupid that I see and the just completely bad takes that I see that unfortunately there are people that buy into and they take the word of these, I mean, I don't know what else to call them, but morons. They're <laughs> like Asmund Gold and now even Zeppla. Um, they just keep saying things that are just so wrong, so factually, obviously incorrect. And well, I mean, this is what we have to do. Now, let me give you some some background here. So initially, Zeppla here, uh, she's at the bottom left, if you're not familiar. She basically was saying she's a streamer famous for Final Fantasy 14. Uh, if you don't know, it's a game. Uh, she is uh, famous for playing that and streaming that game. Now, she was in Russia or not Russia. She was in Ukraine when Russia invaded and uh, started their conflict there. And she immediately got out with her boyfriend, who was a Ukrainian native. She's a native of, I believe, Alabama. And she was living in Ukraine because I guess she liked it better there. What, whatever. I mean, you went to another country and you liked it. I mean, whatever. Do what you gotta do. You, you enjoy it. Do it. Not for me, honestly. I like I like where I'm at. But that being said, um, she said some things that were basically. She started playing the the new Hogwarts game, Legacy of Hogwarts or whatever. Is that what's called? I don't know. Or Hogwarts Legacy. She started playing that, and you know, there have been a lot of people. Just kind of going on and harassing streamers, you know, it's kind of like the smallest people with the loudest voice, essentially, making the biggest stink about things. Because people, on the whole, they seem to love this game, honestly. But there's that small number of people that really want to make sure that nobody has any fun, nobody enjoys anything. So they're going to harass everybody. And Zeppelin was like, I'm not having it. She said, you know what, I've seen what real harm is. I've seen, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, by the way. But she said, I've seen what real harm is. I've seen what real tragedy is, what real, you know, damage is. Because she was there when that that started, right? And she had to leave her whole life behind, essentially. I mean, she got, her, she got to keep her dog. She got the dog with her, I think. But, um, you know, and I, I feel for that. And I totally, 100% agree with her sentiment that if you think that a video game made by an author you don't agree with is doing so much harm to you, man, you've got the easiest life. Like, you have not suffered at all in your life. And that's honestly just 100% accurate. A game is not hurting you. If, it, if you don't like the game, don't play the game, right? Like, there have been plenty of games that I don't agree with the developers. Like, Paradox, for example, they I, they made some games like Stellaris, which I really liked. And then they tried to make a Mech Warrior game, which I was really interested in, but then I kind of saw the <laughs> the background that they were having and the way that they were pushing things and I was like nope and I didn't go around telling people they couldn't play the game I didn't tell anybody anything I was like you know what I'm just gonna do my own thing you know, it was years ago right the only thing I did was I noticed what was going on in the game and I said all right refund you know within like an hour of having it and I just said my only reason was don't agree with the views of the developers that was it that was that was the most I'd said as far as like, I guess activism goes for that particular thing. So now that you have the background, Zeppola went off and started trying to describe, you know, trying to answer for what she said and trying to, you know, justify her position, which she didn't have to do. Cause I would say the vast majority of people agree with what she's saying. The vast majority of people do. This is where she went way wrong. Um, Cause she shouldn't have done that. So, Got some time codes here, and we'll just go through the video, and I'll and I'll talk to some of the things. So, oh, let me fix my audio real quick because I'm pretty sure it's going to the wrong stuff. So here we go. Uh, wait, sorry, I screwed it up. Let me fix it. Everything's fine. Everything's perfectly fine. Here we go. I definitely think that you can, in many cases, separate the art from the artist. Okay, so she's saying here, you can separate the art from the artist, right? Most people would agree. Um, in some cases, it's pretty hard to do. I mean, if Hitler had a, you know, number one pop song, we probably wouldn't be singing about it, right? We probably wouldn't be repeating the song. 
but uh, there are points where you could separate the art from the artist. And she's talking specifically about J.K. Rowling and how J.K. Rowling has what some people would consider to be anti-trans views. And we'll come, we'll get to that. Uh, but next clip here, where she's going to talk about one of the uh, band members, I think like the singer of uh, Pink Floyd, Roger Waters. Which gives royalties to Roger Waters, who's in Pink Floyd, because he is a piece of shit. I'll take her word for it. I don't know. He is a Russian shill. Okay, so she's saying he's a Russian shill. She is saying that this, like 100%, that's what he is. Let's uh, let's examine that real quick. What did what did he say? Uh, so Roger Waters went and talked to the UN, and he called for a ceasefire and condemned Russia's illegal invasion, but also denounced provocateurs in the West who claimed he were who he claimed were responsible. He said the invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation was illegal. He condemned them in the strongest possible terms. Also, the Russian invasion of Ukraine was not unprovoked, so I let, so I also condemn the provocateurs of, in the strongest possible terms. Honestly, pretty milquetoast view, to be honest. Uh, I can see that upsetting both sides. Because, realistically, he's not saying what Zeppelin would want, which is, you know, justifiably, justifiably and reasonably, she hates Russia because they ruined the life she had. I understand that. I get that. Okay? Um, but what he's saying is he wants the war to stop. He doesn't want to see the, the, the blame game. Well, kind of, more or less. He's sort of blaming both sides really but he's trying to he just wants the war to stop essentially he doesn't want to argue too much about who's responsible and whatever he wants the bloodshed to stop okay now i don't think he's necessarily saying that you russia should be allowed to annex ukraine didn't sound like he was saying that at all uh but what he's saying is that and he may not be completely incorrect in saying that yeah the the government the western governments were kind of like pushing this to happen i'm not saying they were but i am saying that they're not that you know the rest of the world isn't 100 percent guilt-free as far as you know not provoking any of this to happen i mean you kind of look at back at what was happening they were talking about getting ukraine back into the un and stuff or getting them to be part of the allies so that would make it more difficult russia had already been doing this plan so no matter what happened, Russia was probably already going to do what they're doing because they most likely want to get that access into Crimea and get access to the ocean there. So, you know, to the ports. So I'm not saying they wouldn't have done it one way or another, but I am saying that it's not 100% wrong to say, yeah, there was stuff going on that was pushing this further, right? I mean, there's always provocations one way or another. People try to say that with... Uh, World War II and America getting into it is, you know, America wasn't 100%, you know, white glove didn't cause any issues either. And that's true because, you know, America was aiding, uh, was aiding the, you know, allied powers before they got into the war, right? It wasn't just like, oh, Japan's just randomly going to attack the, the United States. Like they, there was a reason they were, it was pretty clear the United States was going to, I mean, they were, uh, the president's of the United States as well as the Prime Minister over in Britain, they were talking and they were trying to get the countries to uh, essentially ally together and get America into the war. Congress was just kind of shutting it down in the United States because they're like, we don't want to get into war. But the attack did, you know, essentially push America into the war. But again, it wasn't completely unprovoked because it looked like, oh yeah, well, the U.S. is trying to do, is trying to get into this war. So just Japan tried to take the United States out right off the bat. Didn't really work out for them. But what she's saying is realistically not, 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 not really correct. She's putting it on a lot harsher terms than it actually is. When you see what's actually said, it's not as harsh as what she's making it out to be. Um, now, let's move on to what she's talking about with uh, J.K. Rowling. So she has some comments on J.K. Rowling that I wanted to talk about. I'll tell you something else. Okay. I was actually not going to play this game. Because I personally, I'm not a fan of J.K. Rowling. I do not like J.K. Rowling. You want to know what I think? I don't even know what she said. There you go, from Aspen Gold, the perfect example. So many people watch this guy. So many people watch Zeppelin. 
These two have no idea what they're talking about whatsoever. Neither of them actually knows what she said. You can watch this whole thing and you'll find that they're both completely wildly wrong. And Asman actually says, I want to see what she said. He never looks at it, never looks it up. So I'm going to do it for you. Uh, here we go. Here's the complete breakdown of J.K. Rowling's transgender comments and controversy as per Glamour, which is already going to be kind of biased. So based on it being Glamour, it's going to be a very biased uh, opinion here. But even looking at this, you're going to see it's not as bad as people try to make it out to be. So her tweets were basically... So she starts out by saying people who menstruate, I'm sure there used to be a word for these people, right? And she's obviously being tongue in cheek there. And then another tweet, she's saying, if sex isn't real, there's no same sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women is globally erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to speak or meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. The idea that women like me who have been empathetic to trans people for decades feel kinship because they're vulnerable is the same way as women, i.e. to male violence, hate trans people because they think sex is real and has lived consequences. It's nonsense. That's what she says. Uh, I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. At the same time, my life has been shaped by being a female, so I do not believe it's hateful to say so. I've never felt as shouted, shouted down, ignored, and targeted as a lesbian within our exposed LGBT. GL, I guess it's different on, you know, that side of the world. GLBT community as I have over the past couple of years. So she's talking about how she feels about things, right? She's saying that all of the progress that, you know, people like her in the feminist movement have tried to, you know, push and try to you know, spend all their time trying to get the rights that they have. She's She feels like she's put in all this effort to get rights for women, and she feels like that's being eclipsed by having basically men become women, because in her view, the men are not really women, right? That's what, that's what her view is. And I, I feel kind of the same way in terms of, I don't care what people do. Do whatever you want, just don't, don't expect me to agree with what you do or care, right? Like, I, I couldn't care less what people do. I really don't. As long as it's only you and you're only affecting you, it doesn't bother me, right? If you're affecting me, then it bothers me. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? Like your rights end where mine begin and vice versa. That's not a very difficult concept, right? When we talk about tolerance, we say, you, ha you don't have to agree with people's ideas. You don't have to like their ideas, but you have to tolerate that they have them. Like that's it. You don't have to do anything beyond that. So. This, what she's saying, isn't that crazy, <laughs> all right? And she's allowed to have whatever opinion she wants. That's the way it works, at least, you know, here in the United States and other places. Uh, I mean, in some places you get burned alive, put in a cage or thrown off a building. I mean, there's all kinds of things that could happen to you. But, you know, in the free world, that doesn't happen. You get to do whatever you want, basically. And for the most part, people are pretty supportive. You're gonna find people anywhere who don't support whatever it is you like. People that don't agree with you, you're always going to find that. That's just part of the human experience. People will have different opinions. People have different views, different ideas. It is what it is. You got to learn to live with it. The only other option is you fight, right? So do you want to fight or do you want to just live in harmony and peace? You got to learn to do one of the two, right? Which kind of brings me up to the next bit of a point here. So back onto... <laughs> Back onto the actual video, uh, I got here at 23:41. So this is where Stepla starts taking steps backwards and saying that she, saying that basically, she's saying that trans people are ignoring actual things that hurt them, and she's way off base yet again. So here we go. Oh, I'm a little bit off. I'm on 23 Because it takes work. Didn't Tennessee just pass a ban on uh, people in drag even being outside? <laughs> Hold on, let's finish. Let me see what... I haven't heard a peep about that. How could you... Why would you hear anything about that? Why would you hear... Why? I didn't ask a good question. Why would you hear anything about that? The reason you wouldn't hear anything about that because it's 100% wrong yet again. So let's pull up the actual bill, which is Senate Bill 3, uh, 
of the U.S. or the Tennessee um, Senate. So here's what it says. Uh, section one of that, or section one, section blah, 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 is amended by adding the following language as a new subdivision. Adult cabaret performance means a performance in a location other than adult cabaret that features topless dancers, go-go dancers, exotic dancers, strippers, male or female impersonators who provide entertainment that appeals to a purient interest, which is, if you're not, if you're not, uh, if you don't know what the word purient means, that means basically it's exceedingly sexual in nature, right? Like it's meant to be, it's meant for sexual gratification, essentially. That's, that's what that is. So some sort of exhibition of that nature, like a strip show, right? Uh, or similar entertainments, regardless of whether or not it's performed for consideration. So even if you were, so what that's saying there, that little caveat here at the end, regardless of whether it's not performed for consideration, even if it's not performed for that reason, if you're dressed in that way, such as like, if you've ever been to a strip club, if you've never been there, they have these things called like nipple pasties, right? And those are just things that cover up like the little, the bare minimum so that you can be legally whatever, uh, stuff like that where you can basically i mean you basically have your stuff hanging out but you know whatever it's it's very obviously a sexual thing okay so it says it's an offense for a person to engage in adult cabaret performance on public property or in a location where the adult cabaret performance could be viewed by a person who is not an adult notwithstanding suggestions this subsection expressly preempts an ordinance regulation restriction license okay so this part is just saying that they can't have this they can't preempted by a local thing essentially that's all this is um, so what this is saying, actually saying right here is you can't have sex shows out in public and you can't have them in a place where it can be viewed easily by a child. Okay. You don't do sex stuff in front of children. That's what this bill is saying in its most basic form. That's what this is. Now, if you don't have kids, you might not understand why, but there's a lot of reasons why. Okay, because we could talk about grooming and all kinds of things, but why else would you need to have children exposed to sex acts at any age? You don't. I mean, if you have any good reason, you don't. That's all there is to it. So this bill is not crazy. It's not what she said, which prevents any it prevents drag show. It doesn't. It prevents you from you could have a drag show as long as it's not overly sexualized. Like if they want to do you know, a drag show where people are fully clothed in regular clothing, yeah, fine. But you can't have sex shows. That's it. You can't have that. It's very simple. So, at any rate, um, that's, I think we're pretty much done with this video. I don't really want to see a whole lot more. But my, my biggest point here is essentially that, you know, Zeppla is throwing stones from her glass house over here. She is so upset and her and has been going the same way saying that you know these people don't know what it's like to to face real con like real consequences and real problems they've had an easy life and i mean asmongold's had the most easiest life ever most likely from what i can tell i mean the guy lives like a freaking ru rat he lives like a rodent like the guy's got garbage everywhere his room's disgusting he's got actual rats living there i mean the guy has garbage or not garbage dirt for a floor in his kitchen apparently the guy he takes like pots of stuff of like dirty of like old food like old meat that's like desiccated and for months old and just throws it out in the backyard and stuff like this kind of stuff is insane to me and people actually listen to these guys these people's advice i don't i don't get that and zeppola sitting here trying to make herself out to be a martyr that she was so brave in the face of danger well guess what her and her boyfriend who grew up lived in ukraine his whole life they left all right, they left. If they loved it so much, why did they leave? Everybody else stayed and fought. That says to me that if the same thing happened in whatever state or place she's living, they're gonna run again. They're not. A, they're not gonna fight for what they need. For their. They're not gonna fight for their their countries, their rights, their land. They're not gonna fight. They're gonna run. They're gonna roll over. And this is what happens all the time now with this generation of kids and with this generation in general. And to make a point here, <laughs> let me show you this clip from the movie Hacksaw Ridge, which is a really, really fantastic movie. If you've never seen it, it's a, it's one of those old World War II movies. And 
It's essentially about a guy uh, whose name was Desmond Doss, I believe. Yeah, Desmond Doss. And he essentially joined the army. And I'll, I'll just let the, the movie, it's a little bit dramatized, but factually it's correct. And we'll get to some of that in a second. But just, just listen to this kind of, th this is what the guy said. This is what he believed, right? This guy was a vegetarian raised as, you know, a very religious raised upbringing, was very against killing, was very, you know, up, upright and tried to be as moral as he could, right? He didn't believe in killing anyone. He was a conscientious objector, okay? Which means that he didn't believe in, in killing anyone, right? So here we go. I had a job in a defense plan. I could have taken a deferment, but that ain't right. It isn't right that other men should fight and die. That I would just be sitting at home safe. I need to serve. I got the energy and the passion to serve as a medic. Right in the middle with the other guys. No less danger, just... While everybody else is taking life, I'm going to be saving it. With the world so set on tearing itself apart, it doesn't seem like such a bad thing to me to want to put a little bit of it back together. All right, that. That right there, that is a real person. I mean, obviously it's an actor portraying a real person, but that's what a real person believed. That's what a real person did, okay? And the in the end... Then this case is dismissed. Private Doss, you are free to run into the hellfire of battle without a single weapon to protect yourself. You may resume your duties and begin training as a combat medic. So he won that case. He was allowed to go off, just like he said, go into a hellfire of bullets without a weapon to protect himself to be a combat medic because he wanted to save lives. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to protect his people. He wanted to make sure that he did his part for his country. That's conviction, okay? That right there is heroism and bravery. This nonsense about, well, I, I did this and your guy's life is easy. Yeah, Zeppelin did go through a lot, absolutely. But she can't make herself out to be a martyr. She's not. I'm gonna be honest with you. Just to look at a little bit of the extra information here. <laughs> this guy, his World War II service, he got He's the only conscientious objector to ever get the Medal of Honor. It's the highest award you can get in the military. It is a huge deal. And this guy got it for saving people. He saved the lives of 50 to 100 wounded infantrymen in top area known as 96th Division at the Medea Encampment of Hacksaw Ridge. You watch this movie. I'm telling you, it is an incredible movie. It is just an incredible story. It is inspiring, and it is really just... It, it, it pulls at my heartstrings, honestly, to, to think people like this out there have been out there. And then to realize, what do the kids these days do? What do the kids these days say about people from this generation? Okay, Boomer. That's how we treat people like that, right? We think they're all idiots. But you got guys like this in that generation. Heroes like this guy right here. You're not going to see any of these people complain about this video game or Zeppla or Asmongold. You're not going to see any of them going out and saving 50, 50, 100 people getting shot and your arm fractured. You're not going to see them embedding, having shrapnel embedded in their body while attempting to kick a grenade away from him, his men. You're not going to see that. It gets me fired up. It gets me angry because this is ridiculous, right? It's crazy how many people care so much about a stupid game by an author who has an idea that doesn't matter to anybody except for a couple people, I guess not a couple, but a small number of people who just really want to feel as entitled and as self-righteous as possible, but they haven't done anything. These people want to feel like they're special but they haven't done anything. That includes Zeppelin and Asmongold. They haven't done anything. I won't talk about what I've done in my life because I'm not there yet in my lifetime, but 
I mean, in the near future, I will be able to talk about it, just not right now. That's it for it. That's it for this, though. Just wanted to give my opinions on everything and talk about it. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you have a different idea than me. I'm happy to hear it. I'm happy to answer comments. I'm happy to talk about things because I don't get upset over a discussion. You shouldn't, you shouldn't get upset over a discussion. Maybe you do, but at least have the courage to have the discussion. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Please like and subscribe for more content. And until then, try not to die.